Yeah. Good morning, everyone. So, uh, we were talking about the gel layer controlled filtration in the last class and we will keep on continuing uh, doing the uh, mathematical modeling of the same. But before going into mathematical details, we discussed how a gel layer can be formed on a membrane surface and we found out there are two possible reasons to form gel layer on a membrane surface. Number one, if you are talking about the trans, uh, tra filtration of a solute which will be having a small lower molecular weight, which will be having a significant osmotic pressure, it may happen that in a transient operation beyond a particular time of operation or in a steady state beyond a particular length of the module, the membrane surface concentration can exceed the solubility limit at that particular temperature. In that case, the solutes can be deposited over the membrane surface uh, as a solid, there, is, there will be an onset of phase separation. Second case, if you are talking about filtration of some gelling agents, for example, pectin, polyvinyl alcohol, this is a polymer, pectin is a polysaccharide available in a fruit juice which is, which is harmful as far as the shelf life of the juice is concerned. So, therefore, you have to remove it by some kind of filtration mechanism, for example, ultrafiltration, the gel can be formed from the very beginning of the operation. Okay. Now, again in this case, we can, we can uh, have two scenarios for our uh, gel layer control filtration. One is the steady state, another is the transient that is the most realistic case. So, first we will study the steady state gel layer control filtration. Then we will talk about the most uh, realistic case that is the transient gel layer controlling filtration where the gel layer grows in time. Okay. In case of gel layer filtration, the first assumption is the solute concentration on the membrane surface is constant. Okay. Assumption number 1. Solute concentration on the membrane surface is constant at a gel layer concentration C g. How to obtain this gel layer concentration C g that we will discuss later on. So, solute concentration on the membrane surface is constant that is at C g and at that particular concentration at C g more particles deposit over the membrane sur surface and the thickness of gel layer grows. Okay. As the thickness grows, it offers more resistance and that causes the decline in permeate flux okay, on the throughput of the system. So, we assume that the gel layer concentration is constant throughout the gel layer and uh, how to obtain the gel layer concentration that we will see uh, after some time. So, you see the contradiction or the drastic difference between this model and osmotic pressure controlled model. If you remember in the osmotic pressure controlled model, we have assumed that membrane surface concentration, solute concentration at the membrane surface is an increasing function of time in case of a transient operation or it is an increasing function of x in case of a steady state cross flow filtration system. On the other hand, in gel layer controlling filtration, the solute concentration is on the membrane surface is always constant and it is at the concentration C gel. Okay. We will see later on how to obtain the gel layer concentration. Okay. Now, again we do the first simplistic model or one dimensional model. one dimensional model. The model remains the same as the, the film theory that we have talked earlier. Hind, uh, so, it is basically a variation of film theory or a variant of film theory. We assume that over the membrane surface, there is a film of solute is present of constant thickness. Where solute concentration everywhere is at C gel okay. and, uh, and we do a at the steady state we 
we do a solute balance equation and and in and in gel layer we have in gel layer filtration we, we stated two assumptions and the third assumption that I have missed is that the permeate concentration in gel layer controlling filtration is always 0. In most of the cases it is 0 that is C p is equal to 0. Why C p is equal to 0? In most of the gel layer controlling filtration the solute particles are of larger in size. It has a very high molecular weight so that the effect of osmotic pressure is negligible. If you remember pi is equal to nothing but R T C by m. If m is very high then the osmotic pressure becomes very small. In that case if the molecular weight is very high the size will be definitely very very large okay. and the available membranes that we are using even for the microfiltration membrane in most of the cases these particles are completely retained by the membrane. So, it is most realistic to have a permeate concentration to be 0 in gel layer control filtration. Okay. So, at the steady state the total flux total solute flux towards the membrane is equal to 0. What is the total solute flux? One is J times C, J times C is nothing but the convective flux and is the diffusive flux minus D dc dy because of the concentration gradient. The concent the gel layer concentration is always greater than the bulk concentration. So, there will be backward diffusion from the surface to the bulk. So, at the steady state uh, they should be equal. So, J c minus of minus d d c d y will be equal to 0. So, this is the governing equation of the concentration balance. So, this becomes d c d y will be nothing but j by d c. Okay. Uh, now, you can you can you can, uh, you can have an integral you can rearrange these things separate the variables and can integrate between the uh, um, uh, you know um, uh, membrane surface and the um, bulk of the solution. Okay. So, d c by c is nothing but j d by d y. So, from 0 to delta from C g to C naught. Okay. So, L n C naught by C g is equal to j d delta and d by delta is equal to always mass transfer coefficient fin mass transfer coefficient k. So, uh, this becomes j by k and uh, I think I have missed a minus sign somewhere right. I missed a minus sign here because this is the convective flux towards the membrane minus of a diffusive flux away from the membrane. So, it becomes minus minus plus. So, when you change the sides then becomes minus right. So, there is a minus here. So, there is a minus there, there is a minus there. So, therefore, L n the minus can be absorbed in L n C g by C naught is equal to j by k. So, you can get an expression of membrane in the, in the, in the uh, expression of permeate flux as k L n C g by C naught. Now, you see the this is almost equal to the film theory equation of the osmotic pressure control filtration. But what is the difference? The difference is that uh, there is no C p because C p equal to 0 in most of the gel layer control filtration. Number 1 let us write down C p is equal to 0. Number 2 the gel layer concentration is constant the assumption that gel layer concentration is constant at the concentration C g. So, C m is replaced by C g. Okay. Number 3 is that C g is constant and you can evaluate the value of C g from a separate set of experiment how we will do that. On the other hand C m was a function of time or x whether the case was transient or steady state. Okay. So, this is these are the three differences. So, this is the film theory equation 
for gel layer control filtration and whenever we are talking about the calculation of the system performance, we are talking about the productivity or the permeate flux as well as the permeate quality. But the permeate quality is always, uh, the CP is always doing gel layer concentration filtration, the gel layer control filtration. So, therefore, there is no question of permeate quality, but this expression gives you the, uh, the productivity or the permeate flux of the system. Now, what are the shortcoming of this model? The shortcoming is that if you remember film theory is always saying that there is a film or constant thickness of solute that is depositing over the membrane surface which may not be correct, which is not correct, which is basically actually a growing uh, you know uh, thickness of the concentration boundary layer that is depositing over the membrane surface. So, let us look into the formulation when we can, how we can overcome this limitation. constant thickness concentration boundary layer or mass transfer boundary layer. And in this case, there is, uh, there is, there is not a limitation, we will we will see how to overcome this limitation shortly right now. Another thing that we have to mention about the feature of gel layer control filtration There are two resistances in series, two resistances, one is gel layer resistance Rg, we call it as Rg, another is membrane hydraulic resistance. In most of the cases, Rg, Rg starts from 0 because the gel layer starts depositing. So, then it, 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 it increases and after some time of operation, it becomes almost in the same order of magnitude of Rm and then after some time, Rg becomes very large. So, when we are talking about the steady state operation, when you are talking about the steady state operation, so you, you see the genesis at time t is equal to 0. Rg is equal to 0, sometime T is equal to T1, Rg becomes almost in same order of magnitude of Rm for T is equal to T2, Rg is Rg becomes much much greater than Rm. So, when you almost reach the steady state, that means when you reach at the almost at the end of the operation, then there is no existence of membrane. So, basically gel layer resistance becomes the controlling one, not the membrane resistance. So, whenever we are talking about the and how, how we will control the gel layer resistance when you are reaching the steady state, the gel layer thickness is growing with time and at the steady state or near the steady state, its growth is arrested by the, by what? By external turbulence. How is external turbulence is created? If you are talking about a starred cell, it is the external turbulence is created by the starred speed. If you are talking about a cross flow cell, the external turbulence is created by the, the cross flow of the feed over the membrane surface. So, when you are talking about the steady state operation under the gel layer control filtration, the role of RM, the membrane resistance becomes negligible and it is totally gel layer control resistance and the flux will be dominated by the, dominated by the mass transfer, mass transfer that will be hindering or, or, or try, trying to control the gel layer thickness of the gel layer resistance outside. And what is the mass transfer? It is related to the turbulence in the system, Reynolds number, okay, Reynolds number in the system. And we know how to define the Reynolds number in case of a starters, uh, starred uh, apparatus or in case of a uh, cross flow system. Okay. So, that is very important to understand. Now, let us look into the a two dimensional model or improved version of two dimensional steady state model of gel layer controlling filtration. Okay. So, what is the feature of this? Here the gel layer grows 
and the thickness of the and the, and the concentration boundary layer will be a function of x. So, it, it is it is growing, it is not a constant film. So, not a film of constant thickness that, that is present on the membrane surface, the delta is a function of x. Okay. So, so we, we write down the we write down the solute valence equation. U del C del X plus V del C del Y is equal to D del square C del Y square. The same equation that we have obtained earlier. Now, here the we, we insert the velocity profile. The velocity profile for the laminar flow, we consider the laminar flow. In fact, we can extend this analysis to turbulent flow as well. Okay u is equal to 3 by 2 u naught 1 minus h minus y divided by h square, where h is the half height. Of channel, that means the flow is occurring through a rectangular channel, and we 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 know that the thickness of the boundary layer will be extremely small compared to the half channel height, and we can neglect y square by h square. So this becomes a linear profile. So we have already seen earlier 3 u 0 y by h by neglecting y square by h square because y will be the thickness of the boundary layer will be extremely small compared to the half channel height which will be in the order of millimeter that will be in the order of micron 10 to the minus 6. So, it will be extremely small and v will be nothing but minus j because the thickness will be extremely small, thickness of the boundary layer will be extremely small and whatever the value of permeate velocity at the boundary that will be almost al, al, almost prevailing through that small thickness. Although this is not correct, but this is a very very valid assumption. Okay. So, let us write down the, uh, uh, the let, us, let us insert the velocity profile in the governing equation and see what you get. 3 u 0 y by h that is u del c del x minus j del c del y is equal to d del square c del y square. Now, we make this equation non dimensional that will be easier for us. So, we, we, we write x star is equal to x by l y star is equal to y by h l is the characteristic length in the x direction h is the characteristic length in the y direction. If you do that this becomes 3 u 0 y by h itself is y star and we make c star is equal to c by c naught with the bulk concentration. So, this will becomes del c star, there will be 1 l comes out. So, this becomes del x star minus j over h del c star del y star d by h square del square c star del y star square. Okay. Multiply both sides by h square by d. So, what you get is 3 u 0 h square by d l y star del c star del x star minus j h over d del c star del y star is equal to del square c star del y star square. Okay. Now, I re we replace h by equivalent diameter d by 4 that we have already seen earlier what is the definition of equivalent diameter and how it is connected to uh, channel half height. So, if you do that this becomes 3 by 16 u 0 d square by d l y star del c star del x star minus 1 by 4 j d e by d del c star del y star is equal to del square c star del y star square. Now, if you can look into this equation, the right hand side is completely non dimensional. That means, all the quantities on the left hand side become non dimensional. Now, I think we have already talked or discussed earlier this issue that u 0 
d square d l is nothing but Reynolds times Smith times d by l. Okay. You can open up the Reynolds number, you can open up the Smith number, you can find out that you will be getting u 0 d square by d l. Okay. And we define the non-dimensional flux as j d by d. Okay. So, this becomes a non-dimensional flux, this becomes Reynolds times Smith times d by l and all of them are non-dimensional. So, you get a set of non-dimensional quantities. Okay. So, we, 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 we write this expression as A y star del c star del x star x star minus 1 by 4 p w del c star del y star is equal to del square c star del y star square, where A is equal to nothing but 3 by 16. Reynolds Smith d by l. So, this is the non dimensional governing equation as earlier. I do not think there is any change of this in, in its non dimensional version with the earlier version that we have talked about. So, we required to have boundary conditions at x is equal to 0, c was equal to 0, that means that x star is equal to 0, c star is equal to 1. So, there is one boundary initial condition and the other boundary conditions are at y is equal to delta c is equal to c naught. Now, we can put since we are doing a uh, doing an integral analysis, now we will be doing an integral analysis. Now, integral in an integral analysis, we can really put the value of uh, you know the boundary condition at y equal to delta. Okay. So, at y is equal to delta that is the exact boundary condition, this is more accurate compared to y is equal to infinity c is equal to c naught. Right? So, at y is equal to delta c is equal to c naught. So, therefore, at y star is equal to delta star divided by h c star becomes 1. So, this is the second boundary condition and the third boundary condition will be at y is equal to 0, you have the mixed boundary condition d del c del y plus j c will be equal to 0. So, so this is the convective, uh, this is the mixed boundary condition that is coming. So, to the con uh, convective flux towards the membrane plus diffusive flux away from the membrane will be equal to 0 at the steady state. And this was if you remember this was the governing equation of the one dimensional problem. You make it non dimensional at y star is equal to 0 this becomes this becomes del c star del y star plus p w c star will be equal to 0. So, this is the governing equation 1, 2, 3, these are the three boundary condition and with this, those, this is a well defined problem and we can solve this equation. Now, whole analysis will be very, very simplified this case because C m, the membrane surface concentration is now constant that is at C g. C m is nothing but C g which is constant. Okay. So, because of this simplicity we can we can go for a for an integral method solution that means we can assume uh, the some concentration profile okay some kind of concentration profile so we we take recourse to an integral method of analysis we assume a assume a concentration profile C star is equal to C by C naught A 0 plus A 1 y star by del star plus A 2 y star by del star square. Okay. Now, you, 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 you can look into any textbook and see that they said it is an approximate method. Integral method is always an, an approximate method. Why it is approximate? It is approximate because you are assuming a concentration profile. You do not know whether this concentration profile profile really exists in your system physically or not. You are assuming something. So, therefore, it is always an approximate method, but we have we can see later on that this really simulates the problem very nicely. And we assume a third order polynomial. Why not second order polynomial? Why not fourth order polynomial? Simply because 
and, and these co coefficients are unknown coefficients. We are going to find out these coefficients a 0, a 1 and a 2. Why third order polynomial? Because there are three conditions one can have that this uh, concentration profile will satisfy. What are the three conditions? That means, the condition number 1 at the edge of boundary layer c is always equal to c naught. Right? That means, at y star is equal to delta star c star is equal to 1. The second boundary condition is at y star is equal to delta star del c star del y star becomes 0. These two are called the basic boundary conditions of any boundary layer. Okay? Even if it is a case of heat transfer, then at y star is equal to delta t star, t star would have been equal to 1 and del t star del y star would have been vanished there. Okay. These two have to be satisfied. Number 3, in this particular problem, in this particular case at y star is equal to 0, my c star is always equal to c g star. Because we are talking about a gel layer control filtration, the concentration of the membrane surface will be always constant and that constant is equal to c g star. So, that is known to us. So, therefore, since you will be having three conditions, three boundary conditions, you can have three undetermined coefficients in your profile. That means, you can go up to a second order polynomial. You can go up to a fourth, third order polynomial, fourth order polynomial or higher order polynomials, but all of them will give you spurious solution. Okay. So, ultimately it will be reverted to third or second order polynomial with three coefficients. Okay. Now, what is our next task? Next task is how to evaluate, now we have to evaluate A0, A1 and A2 appropriately for this particular system. So, let us first find out uh, A0, we will be utilizing the condition number 3, that means that y star equal to 0, c star equal to c g star, that means c g star is equal to A0. y star equal to 0 means this will be off, this will be off. So, c g star becomes y, oh, uh, a becomes a 0. If we, if we use the second bound, the first boundary condition y star equal to delta star c star equal to 1, we will be having 1 is equal to uh, a 0 plus a 1 plus a 2. Right? If we use the other one boundary condition that y star equal to delta star del c star del y star will be equal to 0, we will be getting 0 is equal to a 1 plus 2 a 2. Okay. A 0 is known, so this becomes C g star plus A 1 plus A 2. A 2. Now, you have two equations and two unknown A 1 and A 2 and if you really uh, find it out A 1 turns out to be minus 2 C g star minus 1 and A 2 turns out to be C g star minus 1. So, now probably you are in a position to write down the concentration profile to its full extent. Let us write down the concentration profile within the boundary layer. The concentration profile now becomes C star is equal to C g star minus 2 C g star minus 1 y star by del star plus C g star minus 1 y star by del star square. So, this becomes the concentration profile, where C g star is no longer a variable, it is a constant value. Now, what we are going to do like the similarity solution, we take the derivative of del c star del x star we take the derivative of del c star del y star, we take the derivative of del square c star del y star square and substitute them in the governing equation. Let us take the derivative del c star del x star. Now, in this what is x dependent quantity? That is delta star. Delta star is only the x dependent quantity. So, c g star derivative of that this since it is constant it will be there will be nothing minus 2 c g star minus 1 y star. Now, delta star becomes delta star square minus, so there will be a plus sign here, this becomes d delta star d x star okay. plus c g star minus 1 y star square 
and delta star to the minus 2. So, there will be a minus sign here. So, uh, it, there will be minus 2 will be there and it will be delta star cube and you will be having d delta star d x star. right? So, in a, in a neat form you can write down as 2 c g star minus 1 that will be common d delta star d x star that will be also common in the bracket you will be having y star by delta star square minus y star square divided by delta star cube. That is the expression of del c star del x star. Okay. Similarly, we can get the uh, del c star del y star. What is del c star del y star? No term coming from the first term, we will be having only minus 2 c g star minus 1 divided by delta star that is from the first term and the second term will be plus 2 c g star minus 1 y star by del star square. Okay. And what is del square c star? del y star square. Okay. Delta is a function of x only. So, there is no contribution from the first term, there will be contribution from the second term only and you will be getting 2 c g star minus 1 divided by delta star square. Okay. So, basically these are the three derivatives that you will be getting out of it and now what I am going to do? I am going to substitute these three expression del c star del x star, del c star, del y star, del square c star, del y star square into the governing equation and see what you get. If you do that, you will be getting 2 a c g star minus 1 d delta star d x star y star square divided by delta star square becomes square because there was an y star previously. Okay. So, this becomes y star cube divided by delta star cube minus p w by 4, okay, this whole thing in the bracket. So, minus 2 c g star minus 1 divided by delta star plus 2 c g star minus 1 y star by del star square bracket end is equal to 2 c g star minus 1 delta star square. Okay. So, you will be getting this equation with three terms. Now, this equation can be you can you can do away with or eliminate the uh, y star dimension by multiplying both side by d y star and integrating across the boundary layer thickness 0 to delta star. If you do that, you can average out or you can eradicate or eliminate the variation of y star and ultimately what you will get? You will be getting a governing equation of delta star only. Okay. There is a standard form of integral analysis in any boundary layer. Probably you must have done the derivations for the in case of hydrodynamic boundary layer in your other courses in second year or third year. Okay. So, what I will do? I will take I will multiply both side by d y star. So, I multiply both side both sides by d y star and integrate across the boundary layer thickness. Now, a is constant, c g star is constant, delta star is a sole function of x. So, d delta star d x star is a function of x only. So, it has nothing to do with the y star. So, I integrate between 0 to delta star, they will be constant. Again, p w is a function of x only. So, 0 to delta star and from 0 to delta star. So, I integrate across the boundary layer thickness and do away with the y, y dimension. So, I will be getting a governing equation in x. Now, multiplying both sides by d y star means you are multiplying both sides by y to the power 0, y star to the power 0 into d y star. This is known. This is also known as taking the first moment, taking the zeroth moment. This is also equivalent to the the above above exercise. That means multiply both side by d y star, 
and integrate across the boundary layer thickness is equivalent to this statement that taking 0th moment of both sides. This is another statement or you can take the first, you, you can always do that, you can take the first moment on both the sides. That means, you can multiply both sides by y to the power 1, y star to the power 1 dy star and integrate across. But if you take a first moment on of this equation, you will be landing up with an identity because you will be, you'll be basically um, exhausting your degrees of freedom. Now, if there, there are uh, you know certain conditions of the boundary layer analysis, where there is need to take 0th order moment as well as the first order moment, but not in this case. Okay. So, if, if anyone is interested, we can discuss it later on, how when to take the first, first order moment or something like that or higher order moments. But for this case, typically the 0th order moment is good enough. So, if you really do that and uh, in fact, uh, see 2 times C g star minus 1 will be cancelled on both the sides okay. and uh, the whole thing will be it becomes very simplified. So, this becomes 2 a d delta star d x star 0 to delta star. So, you will be getting y star square divided by delta star square minus y star cube divided by delta star cube d y star minus p w by p w by 2. P w by by four and it should be multiplied by two, so therefore uh, uh, you will be getting zero to delta star y star by del star square minus one by delta star d y star, and here all these things will be coming out and it will be basically delta star is a function of x, so it will be integral of d y star, so it will be delta star, so there will be one delta star will be cancelled out and you'll be getting <coughs> two by delta star only. Okay, so, I have I have eliminated C g star minus 1 from all the sides. Now, the, the rest of the exercise is very simple. The integration of this will be y star cube by 3. So, it will be delta and delta star cube by 3. So, it will be delta by 3 minus delta by 4. So, it becomes delta by 12 and similarly, you will be getting uh, minus half here minus 1 by 2 here. Okay. So, I am just omitting ask only one single step and I am writing the final expression that you can always do. The final expression becomes 2 a delta star by 12 d delta star d x star plus p w by 4 is equal to 2 by delta star. So, you can multiply both side by, uh, by delta star. So, you will be getting 2 a by 12 delta star square d delta star d x star plus p w by 4 delta star is equal to 2. So, your governing equa equation now results into this expression. Now, there is a trick here, the trick is that uh, since p w is a function of x, you can estimate p w in terms of delta star from a separate set of x, uh, from, a, from a separate equation. What is that equation? The boundary condition at y is equal to 0. If you look into the boundary condition at y is equal to 0, that means at y star equal to 0, the boundary condition was p w by 4 c g star plus del c star del y star is equal to 0. Now, what we can do? we can substitute the, the derivative del c star del y star in terms of delta and evaluate it at y star equal to 0. The, what you will get is that you just look into this derivative we have already done, evaluate the derivative at y star equal to 0, you will be getting p w by 4 c g star minus 2 c g star minus 1 divided by delta star is equal to 0. Okay? So, on simplification you will be getting p w by delta star is nothing but 8 times c g star minus 1 divided by c g star. This is very important relationship. This says that permeate flux multiplied by the k 
thickness of concentration boundary layer is a constant. What is that constant? 8 times CG star minus 1 divided by CG star. Okay. In most of the cases, CG star is much, much higher than 1. So, therefore, will be, this will be almost, uh, this whole right hand side will can be approximated by 8 only. Okay. So, what we can do next? Next, we will just substitute this, period, this expression into the governing equation. Okay. So, basically uh, what I am going to do here, from this boundary condition, I am evaluating the value of PEW and substituting back here in the governing equation. That is always we can do. So, if you do that, what you will be getting is that, you will be, get, you'll be getting 2A by 3 delta star square d delta star by d x star plus 8 times c g star minus 1 divided by c g star is equal to 8. Okay. Now, take the this term on the right hand side and see what you get 2 a by 3 delta star square d delta star d x star and if you take this on the right hand side and do a simplification, you will be getting 8 by c g star. Okay. So, now what is now, now everything is uh, okay, you can get an integration of delta star over x and get, get an expression. So, what you can do delta star square d delta star is nothing but uh, 24 by 2 a c g star d x star. A, if you remember, it is 3 by 16 Reynolds meet d a by l. Okay. Uh, 24 by 2 is nothing but 12 and c g star is constant. So, you can integrate it out over the z, over, over the length 0 to x star and at x is equal to 0, there is no existence of boundary layer. So, it is 0 to delta star. So, delta star by cube is nothing but 12 by a c g star x star and this becomes delta star cube is equal to 36 by a. Now, you can write the expression of a 3 by 16 Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power Reynolds Smith d by l times c g star x star. So, you can get an expression of delta star out of this. So, if you if you just simplify this expression and uh, and get, one can get the expression of delta star as a function of x star. Okay. So, delta star becomes now, the expression of delta star becomes now 192 raised to the power 1 upon 3 divided by Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3 x star to the power 1 upon 3, c g star raised to the power 1 upon 3. Okay. This is the expression of delta star. Now, there is a similarity to this analysis to the osmotic pressure analysis that we have done by using similarity solution. If you remember, there also the delta star was varying as a function of x star to the power 1 upon 3. Here also it is varying as the as a function of x to the power 1 upon 3, although the coefficients are different, but here also delta star is inversely proportional to Reynolds mid d by l. That, that simply means, if you increase the Reynolds number, the thickness of boundary layer will be small. That means, if you increase the turbulence in your system, the growth of the boundary layer will be adjusted. Right? Now, let us look into the expression of P w. Okay? Uh, the permeate flux. Right? P w we had, P w is nothing but 8 c g star minus 1 divided by c g star times 1 by delta star. Okay. That was the expression of per permeate flux. So, now we put the, ex because you have, now you have got already the explicit expression of delta star as a function of x star. If you substitute it here, you will be getting how my permeate flux is varying as a function of x star. If you do that, you will be getting 1 point, I am just writing the final expression, 1.387 c g star minus 1 divided by c g star raised to the power 2 by 3 bracket Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3 
x star to the power minus 1 upon 3. Okay. So, this expression give you how my permeate flux is varying as a function of x. Now, of course, the most important thing and your, uh, your uh, concern is what is the length average permeate flux. So, I can do an in length averaging over this and can get the length average permeate flux. That means, P w bar is nothing but 0 to 1 integral P w x star d x star. That means, I can carry out this integral and find out what is the length average permeate flux. Okay. Now, If you do that, you will be getting uh, 2.08 Cg star minus 1 divided by Cg star raised to the power 2 by 3 Reynolds Smith D by L raised to the power 1 upon 3. That is the expression of length averaged permeate flux and uh, under the gel layer control filtration. Okay. Now, if you remember that uh, the if if we if we talked about the um, uh, talked if we, if we talked about the 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 permeate flux that is arising out of film theory, it, it was j is equal to k ln c g by c naught. Now, under certain circumstances, under certain assumptions, this equation boils down to the uh, to the almost to the form of the film theory equation, but with a different coefficient. So, I am going to do a mathematical trick on this expression and see what you get. So, let me, let me re rewrite this equation the length average permeate flux as 2.08 Cg star 1 upon 3 minus Cg star minus 2 upon 3 times Reynolds Smith d by L raised to the power 1 upon 3. So, I write down Cg star to the power 1 upon 3 as exponential ln cg star to the power 1 upon 3. Okay? That is always possible. Now, what I do? It is in the form of e to the power x. So, I will just open up this exponential series keeping the first order term assuming the higher order terms will be much much less than equal to less than 1. Okay? So, I write this, write, write this as 1 plus ln cg star to the power 1 upon 3 neglecting the higher order terms that means that means ln cg star to the power 1 upon 3 is much much less than 1 so this can be written as 1 up 1 plus 1 upon 3 ln cg star okay so what is the limit ln the limit is this ln cg star to the power 1 upon 3 is less than 1 okay what is that that means cg star to the power 1 upon 3 is less than e Okay, that means C G star is less than E cube, and if you remember, the value of E is around 2.7. Cube of that will be around 3, uh, around 1920, right? It will be around 20. So in fact, the its value, exact value will be is equal to 21, 20.78 something like that. So it will be roughly equal to 21. So if your C G star is less than 21, then whatever I am doing that is valid. In most of the cases, C G star is less than 21 and whatever we are doing that will be valid. If it, your CG star turns out to be around 500 or 50, then whatever I am doing is not valid that in that case, this will be the expression of length average permeate flux. Okay. So, I can write down the CG star to the power minus 2 by 3 as e to the power ln CG star to the power minus 2 by 3. Again doing the same thing, we can write it as 1 minus 2 by 3 ln cg star. Okay. Once we do that, we substitute in the governing equation and you will see cg star to the power 1 upon 3 minus cg star to the power minus 2 by 3, 1 1 will be getting cancelled out and 1 by 3 ln cg star plus 2 by 3 once ln cg star, this becomes only ln cg star. So, this becomes length average permeate flux as P w 2.08 Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3 ln c g star means c g by c naught right ln c g star. Now, this expression has that drastic similarity with the film theory equation. 
if you remember now if I write down these two equations one after another you can understand the one dimensional film theory model that gives V w is equal to k ln C g star by C naught that means length average permeate flux was should have been uh, one point shadow number times ln C g star. So, shadow number was 1.85 Reynolds net d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3 ln C g star C g by C naught. So, the non dimensional form this becomes the mass transfer coefficient becomes shadow number. Okay, if you remember the film theory equation, it was Vw is equal to k ln C g star and if you make j, the permeate flux j as non dimensional, this k becomes Sherwood number and Sherwood number under laminar flow condition becomes 1.85 Reynolds mid d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3 for the channel flow. Okay. And the two dimensional model becomes P w bar is equal to 2.08. Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3 ln C g star. For of course, this is there is a validity of this equation. What is the validity? C g star is less than 21. So, now you can see the difference of the two. The under this condition, let us say these two expressions are exactly identical, only there is a difference in the coefficient, and this coefficient is higher. And how much is higher? If you if you if you write 2.0, if you evaluate 2.08 divided by 1.85, this becomes around 1.15. That means 15 percent enhancement. Okay, what does that mean? This is the same thing I am trying to harping on, uh, trying to harp every time from the very beginning when you are talking about the film theory. We are assume a we are assuming a constant thickness of concentration boundary layer, which is not true actually the thickness is growing. Initially, the thickness is less then later on it is developing and after long distance it will be fully developed where the film theory equ equation is valid. That means, initially we are neglecting the permeate flux. So, if we use the film theory equation, you will be definitely under predicting the permeate flux and how much the how, how, how you can quantify the under prediction? The under prediction will be in the tune of 15 percent. Okay. So, if you use a two dimensional model that means developing mass transfer boundary layer or concentration boundary layer, the uh, there will be a, a definite increment in the mass transfer coefficient and that will be in the order of 15 percent more than the one dimensional film theory equation. Okay. So, I will stop here then we will take up uh, this, this uh, issue in the next class. Thank you.